Today's topic is on gestational diabetes mellitus, also known as GDM in pregnancy. The definition is carbohydrate intolerance resulting in hyperglycemia with onset during pregnancy and resolve within 6 weeks postpartum period. The risk factors for GDM are maternal age more than 35 years old, obesity, and also previous history of GDM. For the screening for GDM, usually we do MOGTT, which is Modified Oral Glucose Tolerance Test, usually done at 16 to 18 weeks, or if there are indications, we do it during the booking visit. And if the first test, the results are normal, the second MOGTT will only be repeated at 24 to 28 weeks. So what are the indications to do MOGTT? Firstly, current maternal condition. For example, if the mother's age is more than 25 years old, and if the BMI is more than 27 kg per meter square. And also for current pregnancy condition, if there is polyhydramnios, which means excessive liquid amount. And also two episodes of glycosuria, when there is glucose in the urine. And multiple pregnancy like twins or triplets. Increased weight gain of the mother, which is more than 0.5 kg per week. And for past obstetric history, if there is any history of GDM, history of recurrent miscarriage, and big baby, congenital anomalies of previous babies, and also if there is any unexplained intrauterine death. For the procedure of MOGTT, it is quite simple. The first step, the doctor will ask the patient to fast from 12 a.m. to the next morning. When the next morning, 8 a.m., the patient will be asked to come to the clinic to take the fasting blood glucose level. And then after taking the fasting blood glucose level, the patient will be asked to drink a cup of glucose and water to drink within 10 to 15 minutes. After drinking, for after 2 hours, the doctor will take the blood again for the 2 hours postprandial reading. So there are two readings for MOGTT. The first one is fasting blood glucose level. The second one is 2 hours postprandial reading. And for the results, this is the normal, this is the results that will show GDM. So if the fasting blood glucose is more than or equal to 5.1 millimole per liter, and if the two hours after the glucose reading is seven more than or equal to 7.8 millimole per liter, this confirms GDM. Any one of these two results will confirm GDM. For management of GDM, first the doctor will ask the mother to exercise in order to lose weight. And also, the doctor might refer her to the dietitian for diet control, where the diet will be low in calories and low in sugar. And if diet control is not effective to lower the blood sugar level, the doctor might give oral hypoglycemic agents, for example, oral metformin. If these oral medications are not effective as well, the doctor will do insulin therapy for the patient, where insulin injection will be given. Fetal monitoring is also important during the pregnancy. So the fetal growth monitoring is done by using serial growth scan and detailed ultrasound scan. For serial growth scan, it is done every 2 weeks after the 24th week to check for the growth velocity of the baby. So it can help the doctor to assess fetal par parameters, estimated fetal weight to rule out macrosomic baby or intrauterine growth restriction. It can also let the doctor assess the amniotic fluid index to rule out polyhydramnios. For detailed ultrasound scan, it is done at the 18 to 24 weeks to check for any fetal anomalies. In addition, for fetal well-being, there is fetal kick chart and cardiotocography. So fetal kick chart is recorded from 28 weeks of gestation onward. And the normal fetal kick chart will be at least 10 kicks per day. For cardiotocography, it is to monitor the fetal heart. Moving on to the timing and mode of delivery, if the GDM is well controlled under diet control, 
we can allow, allow the delivery up to 40 weeks. We do not allow post that delivery. And if the mother is having GDM, which is controlled on insulin, we will do elective induction of labor at, 20, at 38 weeks. And GDM is actually not an indication for C-section or delivery before 38 weeks. But if we suspect macrosomic baby, we will do C-section because we are afraid of shoulder dystocia and injury to the baby. So for complication of GDM, maternal complications are miscarriage, pregnancy-induced hypertension or preeclampsia, preterm labor, pre PROM, which is prelabor rupture of membrane, recurrent infection, prolonged labor, and operative delivery, mainly because the baby is bigger in size. Whereas for fetus, macrosomic baby, which means big baby, there might be birth trauma or shoulder dystocia, and also polyhydramnios, excessive liquid fluid, respiratory distress syndrome, and intrauterine death. So that's all for this video.